So let me first start by saying we're going to give you a lot of information today. If you have any specific questions, we're always available for you. If there's any part of this class that you'd like us to expand upon, let us know. And the chat box is always there for you to use to ask any questions that you have. Quickly, just some things that you can look forward to um, learning and hearing about during our presentation today. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to find some sellers, branding yourself as standing out, preparing for the listing presentation, of course, um, some uh, tips to effectively market your listings, and then of course, to manage multiple offers once you do that, and essentially how to generate more business from every listing that you do have. Next slide. Um, so, lead gen and finding sellers. I think that, Danya, your your listings are mainly referrals, right? Most of my business is referrals. I do do online. Um, you'll see the Google pay per click and LSA. LSA stands for local service ads. So mm -hmm. Google has a Google My Business platform where you can set up a free account with your Gmail. Um, I also have a Gmail that um, I guess redirects to Donya Dia Sales. So it's DD at Donya Dia Sales. Uh, you have to pay a yearly fee for that. So it looks a little bit more professional. And then my Google My Business page is where I can get reviews. And then I have a platform where um, people who are searching, let's say like top realtor in 33173, um, it'll give them a list of people that they can click on. And my reviews and my profile will show there. So I, I use that. Um, I use a lot of obviously social media uh, and intentional weekly newsletters. Um, that's pretty much the the, the gist of where I'm the getting. The gist of it. Yeah. So um, and then, of course, um, there is going to be a part where we're going to touch on the database. Like, that's my thing. I'm, I'm a huge CRM database person because um, I really do believe that most of our future business would probably come from people we know instead of getting distracted by shiny objects. Um, and I think that we're probably the worst <laughs> at that. We are always trying to look for what new system is going to help me get a listing today instead of just kind of diving into um, the relationships that we already have. Um, so for me, mine typically come from past clients, right? So um, I've been doing this full time since 2012. I got in the industry in 2008. So I've luckily been able to get repeat business. But for those who might be newer in the industry, it's really important to not only tap into your sphere of influence, of course, but these are just a couple examples of, uh, let's say, services or methods that you can uh, tap into to potentially generate some future listings. So for circle prospecting, getting expired, for sale by owners, you have similar services like Red X, Land Voice, Mojo, Vulcan 7. They're all pretty much the same. Um, I'm not necessarily a dialer girl. That's not me, but I just wanted to put that there. So I can't really give you tips and tricks on scripts. I will only preach on what I know. <laughs> so if you want another class on, uh, let's say scripting for these calls and things like that, um, we can definitely get somebody for that. Um, postcards, I love postcards, that's my jam. Um, you can do Canva, Wise Pelican is a service that will essentially not only allow for you to design and print, they'll even mail out this, um, the postcards for you. Prospect, Prospect Plus is very similar to that and Danya mentioned how she uses the others. I think that um, for those who might not necessarily have a lot of, let's say, cash up front to make large investments in tools and services and stuff, which I wouldn't suggest anybody start off at anyway, these online referral companies would probably be something that I would definitely look into. Now, I will say that I've had a lot of success with them, especially like um, Fast Expert. Um, Upness has changed the way they've done things a little bit. I had a lot of success with Homelight at one point. There are dozens similar to these companies. And essentially what they do is they give you the lead. And then if you convert the lead, you pay a referral fee to them. A um, couple years ago, there were definitely a lot more leads that came in. However, you never know. I would definitely suggest um, looking into these companies and even just Googling um, referral, like real estate referral based companies. There's a ton of them out there. Um, if you guys are with a brokerage that has um, like Op City, for example, where you're getting the buyer leads, think of it that way, but you may be getting seller leads as well um, with some of these companies. So I would definitely look into that. I'm going to just um, kind of add 
when you're, because uh, again, my my expertise and Chandra's expertise are very similar. I've never used any of these online platforms. I've always really honed into my sphere of influence. And I bet each one of us has at least a couple hundred people, if not thousands on their phone. And you could literally just pick five people a day. They could be people that you haven't spoken to in 20 years, but hey, you pick up the phone and you say, you know, you're in my phone. I'm a real estate agent. I wanted to offer my services. It's a great tool. It's in your, it's in your palm of your hand. Another thing is for social media. Um, every single property that I that I sell, regardless of the price range, I always produce a video. Um, and then what I do with that video is I put it on my social media, on my Facebook page. I've been building this for a very, very long time. So I can say, just start somewhere. I will eventually build with time. Um, and what I do is I boost those videos to get views. And then I use those views to leverage with my sellers, like, look what I'm doing. And, and just to bring it back um, to, the, to the very beginning, before I even had a listing, I used a listing of my brokers. And I put that video out there and I said, when you list with me, you get a full production video. When you list with me, you get a 3D floor plan. And I put that on Instagram. I put that on Facebook before I was even doing it. And, you know, I can tell all of you that it's perception. And if people see you out there and you're producing the, the that sort of quality, then it just kind of puts you on the front of their minds when they're interested to sell or buy. So, you know. There's a lot of different ways. There's, and again, as YPN professionals and every single week that we're offering these educational classes, I'm sure that if you took a class every single week after one year, imagine how much better you would be. You can go to the next slide, Kevin. So, so oh, go ahead. go ahead. You wanna go? Okay. <laughs> I yeah. definitely wanted to make sure that we touch on some tools and services that we actually get through our Miami membership. Um, I am a firm believer in using and exhausting everything that you already have before you look to spend money on other things, right? We pay a mem um, our dues every year, which I do now. I'm sure you guys have been getting the emails. <laughs> um, and we, our association by far provides the most tools and services compared to all the other associations. I, I don't care what they say. Every time I happen to be with somebody, another realtor from a different association or whatever from across the country and I see their dashboard, it ours blows theirs out of the water for sure. So I wanted to take a minute to make sure that we highlight some of these um, tools and services that you get as part of your membership um, that can be used to either obtain new listings, um, you can use in your listing presentations, you can use to service your listings, and we'll dive a little bit more into each of them and how I've even used some of them. Personally speaking, Remind and, and RPR especially, those are my babies. That's that's definitely part of my, of my business for not only prospecting, but servicing my clients as well. And I'll explain how. Next slide. <laughs> so Remine, um, for those who don't know, first, Miami Realtors actually own it. <laughs> so if you want a reason to use it, that's number one. You, we own it. It's ours. We control the data in it, right? So that's absolutely um, pivotal and amazing. Remine, before it was actually provided as as a service to us by Miami Realtors, I actually used to pay $200 a month for their, their uh, premium plan. And the reason why is because you're able to track the properties. It, it has a direct integration with the MLS and tax records. So everything is in one platform. And in the, the, the premium version of Remind, it also shows you all of the contact information for people who are associated with properties. Right. So now instead of having to pay for another service to get phone numbers and stuff, Remind would give it to me and Remind would also let me know if the person is on a do not call list. Um, the really cool thing about Remind as well, it has the predictive analytics um, where you're, it will tell you who is likely to sell um, based off of its own AI stuff. So based off of, let's say, the number of years they've been there, the amount of equity they have, um, whether or not they're an owner-occupant and things like that, um, if they refinance, Remind would lo let you know if uh, specific homes or specific sellers, rather, are likely to sell their home, right? Um, and it has 
absolutely amazing search filters for prospecting. So for example, if I have a listing, um, let's say in the neighborhood that I live in, right? I get a listing here and I wanna make sure that everybody knows about the listing. I could send postcards to everybody in the community um, or I can be even more specific with who I target, right? So I can go into Remind and say, hey, generate a list of everybody who lives in this subdivision who has not had who has not done a refinance in the last four years, who did not purchase their home in the last three years, has at least $100,000 in equity, um, actually occupies the home, that it's not tenant occupied. I can literally put all of these filters into Remind. It'll generate a list. I can literally get some labels and I can specifically target people who are likely to sell in the very neighborhood that I have a listing in, right? Letting them know how I just sold this house for 60,000 over asking, right? So that's an example of how I love to use Remind. Um, and of course, I said the contact information. So if you have not played around with Remind, I would definitely look into it. And again, our association is great as far as like the trainings. If you um, look at our calendar for Miami Realtors, you'll see on there some previous, um, some future classes for Remind. And if you go to miamirealtors.com forward slash um, Remind, you'll actually see some links for some previous trainings on Remind. I would definitely look into it if, you, if you're not familiar with it yet. So next slide. IMAP. Danya, you, you use IMAP, right? So I use IMAP all the time. Um, whenever I'm preparing for a listing presentation, I use it to see what the schools are, what the grades of the schools are. I use it for the flood zones. Um, I use it for uh, to know when they bought the property, if they have a mortgage on the property, what's their interest rate on the mortgage. Uh, I use it to see if they have a homestead exemption, whose names are on the deed. Is it in a trust? Is it you know you know is it in probate? Is it in foreclosure? Uh, I use it for all of those things. Um, you, you know, it? it's, it's a great tool. And Another thing that I use it for as well is like, for example, whenever I go into like, we can still cancel the binder, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, so, done. Get... I'm going to mute Monica. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but no, everyday real examples. Like, for example, whenever I'm going into a building, obviously we use the comparables in the area, but the most solid comps for any listing that you're going into that's in a building is the recent sales in that building. And also what the lines, what each line has sold for. So what I usually do is I go into IMAP. I put in the first four parts of our folio number, tax ID, and then I sort it and I see uh, recent sales and I'm able to see, you know, kind of, okay. So the 07 line going back two years sold at this value. So I know that you can also use it for mailing addresses. Um, I'm just giving you the ways that I use it in my business every single day. Um, but it's just, it's really great information to me. IMAP is everything. I use it for demographics. Um, I, I like to use it for general, uh, comparable reports. What else? Um, it does give you some MLS history um, data, but I, I typically don't use it for that purpose, but it's good for like a quick glance. Um, but, you know, if you look at all of the little bullet points here, there's just so much that you can do with it. And, you know, I highly recommend it as a tool that you use. I, I probably use IMAP every single day and RPR. Those are my two, like you say, babies. Those are my two babies. Yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah. That? Yeah. Like IMAP, I'll say like even, okay. So I'm farming my neighborhood. Right. And I actually went into IMAP and I was like, okay, well we need to order some, you know, some postcards and some stuff or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well let's see how many doors are here. Cause we're, I'm in a community of single family homes, town homes and villas. I'm like, how many are here? And I saw there are 800 and like 43. Okay. Beautiful. Um, I also looked up to see like how many are, um, are rented out, right? Because you're able to filter IMAP too. You'll able to see the the homeowner, their their the property address and their tax address and their tax mailing address, right? So you're able to see all of that in IMAP. And last night I was actually at our HROA board meeting. Lord help me, those things are so they're, they're crazy. Um, <laughs> and somebody randomly was like, you know, how many, what percentage of people here actually rent versus own or whatever? And I was like, only 10% in here actually rent their properties. Like over almost 90% of the, the, the homes in here are actually owner occupied or whatever. And they were like, whoa, how'd you know that? And I'm like, well, <laughs> let me tell you how, 
you know, and I literally got that information from IMAP. And I was able to share that simply because somebody in our community was concerned with how long the guest line is sometimes to get into our community, right? So it, I just thought that was interesting where I literally off the top of my head was able to pull, you know, just the, 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 the demographic stats in here and stuff just based off of what I got from IMAP because I wanted to send some mailers out. Yeah, that's so, on the demographics tab. It gives you a nice little pie graph and it tells you owner's yeah. occupants. Just yeah. in case you're wondering where she found that. Yeah. All right. So next slide. RPR. All right. So RPR can be used specifically, I personally, um, for lead generation and your listing appointments and presentations. If you have have not actually gone into RPR and look at their listing presentation tools. I personally think RPR is probably one of the most underrated tools that we have had at our fingertips for years. You can prepare CMAs in there. You can refine property values in there. So like right now I have um, uh, a homeowner who wants to sell their house in Miami Gardens, but he's putting new windows in. I'm able to literally go into the report and update all of that, right? and then it'll update its value. And then I can present that for him. Market activity reports, neighborhood reports, school reports, and it's all branded to your broker. If you're a bro it, um, to your brokerage, if you're a broker, you can get it set up where it's branded for your agents for the entire brokerage. And the reason why this is really important is because since RPR now integrates with chat GPT, you're also able to generate these reports and have RPR literally script out exactly what you're going to say. There is literally no excuse for you to not have something to say, whether it's on social media or in person, as to why someone might wanna sell their house right now, simply because of everything that is in RPR. And RPR, like, um, like Remind, pulls data from the MLS, so it'll give you listing history and things like that, but it's also tied to the tax record. So you'll, within RPR, be able to see, you know, mortgage history and all of that. It is such a fantastic tool. You can literally tell it, give me a script for a blog for my social media captions, right? You can use it for your social media captions. Um, you can use it for a video, which is what I did, right? So I actually have a landing page for my, my neighborhood and on there is a video with an update of what is happening where I live, right? 80, 85% of the homes in here have at least 150,000 in equity, you know, things, things like that. The homes are selling for at least 98.5% of their asking price and things like all of that I put into it and it's on the website and it goes out to everybody in my neighborhood um, on the, um, on the um, postcard with the QR code, right? So RPR really is, absolutely amazing it has the the cma and all of the reports that it generates you're really able to um, customize them and add your own pages so if you wanted to add client <laughs> yeah the app is fantastic too so this so is actually wanted, a market yeah report. uh it, mm -hmm. what is what's great about it is that when you go into it you can actually customize the front screen so you have your picture your brokerage your logo and it looks phenomenal. I've been using this for the past 10 years. I actually print this page one and I attach it to all my offers because it just kind of makes you look uh, very professional when you're when you're presenting. And then obviously when you pull this out with your sellers, they're very much wowed. And then obviously the app on the phone is, is incredible. It's a great tool for like, let's say those on the spot listing presentations or you're in a building and they say, you know, tell me what you think about, you know, the what do you think about what's going on? And I can just pull up rentals. I can pull up um, foreclosures. I can pull up, you know, so much information at the palm of my hand. So mm -hmm. it's an incredible tool if you're not already using it. Yeah. And then like the market report um, or the neighborhood report, especially like having that with the CMA is really important because the CMA, of course, it lets you, it helps you justify what you suggest you list the house at. However, the neighborhood reports really gives a more, a more detailed insight of what is happening there, right? So how many properties or the properties that came on the market that expired, what actually went pending and things like that. It's a fantastic tool. And it also has, um, it can generate graphics for you to post on social media too. And then the integration with ChatGPT, I'm sorry, 
when you're doing that, it actually tells, asks you to tell it, are you trying to talk to buyers or sellers? So it changes the tone so that you, it, it has you speaking in a way to help homeowners understand why they should list right now, you know? So definitely, uh, definitely, definitely, if you have not used RPR, please look into it. I, I think it's the most underrated tool um, that we have. Uh, Miguel had asked how to personalize is it when you're in RPR? I mean, this is that could be a class in itself. So pardon us for not having a slide on it. But just quickly, when you go in to generate the report before you even like um, print it and stuff, it asks you if you want to add any custom pages. It's a very easy, straightforward thing to do. It's also in your profile. Excellent. So when you go into RPR, you have a capability to set up your profile, and there you can upload your headshots, your logos, and all those good things. And what about mm -hmm. to personalize it with your with your brokerage branding or like your personal branding? Yeah, so you just upload your logos. You have a logo for yourself and you have a logo for your brokerage. Okay. Yeah, perfect. so the logo for your brokerage should be there by default because that, that broker has to set that up with them, um, which is very easy. There, there's It's just literally an email that you send over to them and they'll update everything. Um, and then on your end, if you go into like your profile settings, it'll ask if you have your own logo um, and your own basically contact information, headshot and all of that, and you update it there. And it'll reflect on all of the reports that you generate. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next slide. E-Property Watch is another tool that we have. Um, the reason why I really wanted to put this on here because the people that you would put in ePropertyWatch property watch are already homeowners who are watching their equity, right? So the report that goes out monthly from ePropertyWatch property watch, it integrates with matrix. So it pulls all of the market, uh, market activity and listing activity directly from matrix to send over to the homeowners that you put into ePropertyWatch. property watch. Um, it gives the neighborhood information, how much their property is worth, how much equity they have. Um, and of course it's completely branded to you. Um, and it has over 50% open rate. Now, I don't know if you guys know about open rates and emails, especially when it comes to real estate. I mean, we're talking just a couple percent. You have most companies, if they say they have a 17% open rate, it's like, that's absolutely amazing, right? So most people are not really opening their, their emails like that. But to see over 50% open rate, that is fantastic. Um, a, success to, um, a success story with ePropertyWatch property watch for me, this was actually a couple years ago pre-covid actually um because personally i don't use eProperty watch anymore i use a different service called homebot um that's similar to this however like i said before i go spend money on something else i would use what i have right and eProperty watch if i didn't have any money or i wanted to start somewhere i would use this but a success story with this would be i had um a client that i helped purchase a home in homestead and then she told me one day listen as soon as i hit $120,000 in equity, I'm selling it. <laughs> okay, don't, yeah, don't worry, I'm watching your house. So now I put her into e-property watch, right? I'm looking at her at the neighborhood activity to see everything that's going on. I know what her mortgage balance is. I was there when she purchased the house. I know how much she put down. Of course, the, the information is also in the public records as far as like the mortgage, right? But having her receive something every single month as she's watching her equity build made it very easy when one day I'm like, Hey, we're at, we have $135,000 worth of equity. Did you still want to sell? And she sold it, you know? And then it just so happened that she sold it to tenants that I put in the home for her and I ended up double lending it. Right. So a lot of times again, Again, before we start spending money and looking for shiny objects, sometimes we just have to take care of the people that we've already serviced and love on them. So if you've worked with buyers already and have buyers that you've already closed with, take them, put them into ePropertyWatch Watch so that they can see their equity grow month over month um, and see everything that's happening in their neighborhood, everything that's happening with the schools and things like that. And you don't have to worry about, let's say, the accuracy rate, right? It's, it's pulling it right from Matrix. So you can let them know like, hey, everything that you're seeing is completely accurate, is coming from the service that we use, you know, as professionals. 
So just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of this service, ePropertyWatch. Watch. Do you want to talk about HouseBot since you brought it up? HomeBot? HomeBot, yeah. Um, and, and why you chose it over ePropertyWatch, Watch, just so people have a general basis. Um, I chose HomeBot over ePropertyWatch Watch because HomeBot also has the ability for you to have a lender tie into it. Um, so what's really cool is HomeBot, the way that I tell my clients, I tell them that it's more of a, of a wealth management tool because HomeBot, when, when the homeowner receives these monthly reports, um, they're able to see like, Hey, if I paid an extra hundred dollars a month towards my mortgage, I would be able to pay my home off X number of years sooner. I would save X number, you know, X amount of money in, in interest. Um, or, you know, if there's an opportunity for them to refinance, they can, all those call to actions are right there in the email. Um, and so when, when they do certain activities in the, um, based on the call to action that they, in, they interact with in the email, it'll notify me, it can notify my lender or whatever. And it does not, honestly, it's very affordable. It's only $25 a month. Um, it's a completely different cost for your lender, but for us as agents, it is only $25 a month. And it's, it's a great tool. The open rate with that is very good as well. And it allows for you to integrate um, some personalized like bomb bomb videos and things like that. So that's why I decided to go with HomeBot over ePropertyWatch. Watch. However, I used ePropertyWatch Watch for probably three years before I started paying for HomeBot a couple of years ago. Very cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Next slide. Yes. So the Diana. My Bird yeah. Photographer um, program is great because then you own exclusive royalties to your pictures because there's times where you'll be working with the photographer and you'll have no idea that that's only just for the MLS and they could potentially sue you because, you know, Miami is very, very famous for being, you know, a lot of uh, lawsuits going around. Um, so this is just a great, safe way for you to connect with the photographer and to be able to know that you own exclusive royalties. And it's also, you know, a great way to connect with somebody. Um, I always say that you want to marry a photographer because that photographer should be able to capture what it is that, you know, that's in your head. Like, for example, I can tell my videographer, like, listen, what I want you to do is I want you to swirl around and then zoom in and come out. And then I want you to come back and put this here and he'll understand what I'm saying. So you want to just find someone that you connect with. And it's very hard sometimes to just like, let's say, go on Google. You can use this platform and, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So I highly recommend. Do they provide services or um, statewide? Um, that's uh, a it, question. It, it depends, but I will say if you go to the landing page, miamire.com forward slash preferred photography program, there's quite a few of them on there and they're all vetted. Um, I'm sure that maybe if you reached out to a couple of them that they would be able to tell you exactly what areas they service. My yeah. preferred, my preferred, um, photographers and videographers actually made it on here. There's swift pics. I love them. I've used them for years, probably. I don't even, I don't even know how long for years. And I do know that they do a lot of Florida. Um, so I would say go through there, talk to a couple of them because some of them, their pricing varies too. Um, somebody asked in the chat, what service do you use for floor plans? My photographer will do for floor plans. So they'll do the Matterport videos. They'll do um, the virtual floor plans. They'll do all of that for me. Um, depending on the pricing. So that's why I said go, go on here so that you can kind of price them out and see who provides what service where. Next another uh, another floor plan app that just came out. It's called Kubikasa. It's closer mm -hmm. to the top of mm -hmm. our uh, our dashboard. So yeah, it, you know, you, you have multiple options and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure what the photographer can provide versus what Kubikasa provides can be uh a little bit different too, you know, depending on, you know, the, the inter interactivity of the, the floor plan, I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. Next slide. Oh, Co-branded marketing. Yeah. yeah um, I'm going to talk about this because go I ahead. have used these marketing materials. Uh, it's actually in my, my marketing plan. There's like a little, let's say like the, 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 the United States. And then it shows like kind of like where all the like feeders come from. And then it will tell you like how many websites we have. We have Miami in the rankings. 
These are all tools that are accessible to you on the Miami RE dashboard, and you can incorporate them into your business in so many ways. You can use them for social media posts. I highly encourage you to just go to the Miami dashboard and to just kind of download everything that you can and then figure out where it will fit into your businesses. But um, I would say at least four or five of these flyers are incorporated into my marketing plan that I use with every single listing. Likewise, like I have the one where it shows all the websites that it syndicates to all of the um, MLSs that we share our listings with um, and the global partners we have. Those mm -hmm. flyers are in our listing presentations because it shows the sellers like, hey, we're not just marketing to Miami. Miami is a global city. We have people moving here from all over the world. And so we use the Miami Realtors um, flyers um, to show that when you list with us, it goes to everybody, out, even outside of Miami. Very powerful stuff that you can use in your listing presentations. And are we able to, do they provide our printout, like to print it out and do direct mailers as well? Yes. It's all yours. I mean, you you can use it for that. You can use it for whatever. There's even videos, like you see the Why Miami South Florida marketing videos, and they update them all the time. You can literally download them, add your logo on there, like, you know, and then post it on your YouTube, send it to your, your database and generate business that way as well. You can use it however you like. It's for you to take and brand for yourself. Perfect, perfect. But I'm saying they don't provide the the <clears throat> the campaign. Literally, they don't no. say, they don't mail it out for you. And, no, and... no, no, they do not. Okay, perfect. So let's prepare Done. for this appointment. Um, you know what? What I'll say is. Um, you want to kind of have all your ducks in a row, uh, create all your systems. I think before you can become a successful listing representative, like you're going to need to have your systems. You're going to need to have your marketing plan. You're going to be, you're going to need to have, like I have a drive that's called listing presentation drive that if I have a presentation that I've got to get to, and let's say like 30 minutes, I can print that out, go to the MLS, print out comps and everything is already made for me. I've already kind of structured everything and built that. So that's would be your first step. So obviously, you know, in my listing presentation, what is it, what does it contain? So you have the marketing plan, um, you know, I research, I, I, I kind of see where the property sits in the MLS. I ask obviously questions to the seller. Have you done any upgrades? What is the, you know, bedroom, bathroom count? How many square feet do you have? And the reason why I ask this, even though I have access to a tax rule with all that information is because they may have put um, additions onto the property. So I need to know, you know, and if I were to have a conversation with them and, and ask them, you know, how many bedrooms do you have? And they say four, but the tax rule says three. That's when I begin to ask, well, did you build that? Or, you know, tell me more about that. Did you buy the house like that? And then that way it kind of gives me like a gist of the, the, the whole picture of the property. And then that way as well, when I am pulling comps, I'm pulling the right comps. I'm adding four bedrooms. I'm adding three bedrooms. If it is not uh, recorded in the tax rule and they do not have any permits, now I know that, you know, with certain um, financing programs, let's say like FHA, they may not count that extra bedroom. So even though they say they have a four bedroom house, we have to, count it as a three bedroom if it is a house that would target you know be for a fha buyer per se now as far as cma and pricing i always like to give myself a array of comps i like to get like the high side of the market the you know the, the mid and then the low side and then i usually position my book where i have comparables first i have pending after and then i have the active sales and the way that i talk to them is i say look your um your your sold comps have the most weight then you have what people are putting offers on in, in your same market. And then we have what your competition looks like, which is your active inventory. So you need to have that. You need to have the tax rule. Uh, I, 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 Looks like we uh, we lost Donia there. Donia, if you can hear us, you're getting kind of choppy. Hello? You're better. There right. we go. You're back. Okay. Um, okay. So I always use the RPR reports. I have my MLS printouts. Um, obviously, before you go, I like to send them. I have created a marketing video. Again, I use the same videographer, and this has been years of building this. So you you probably won't have a marketing video right at the beginning. But what I did was I created a marketing plan, and then with time, I 
I kind of like took the plan and made it into a video using all the tools and, you know, pretty much old videos that I had on, 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 on deck. Um, but anyways, like I usually like to send them that marketing plan first, along with, you know, a welcome email. I will see you soon. There's agents that send uh, letters or cards or gifts. I, I don't typically do that. I like to get in the door and I never like to talk about a price until we're sitting at the table, because what I like to tell them is until I touch, see, feel the property, I really can't give you an accurate value. And I want to set the correct expectations. And then obviously your marketing material, which would be my marketing plan. And then I typically like to bring examples. Um, obviously the videos that I have, I'll send them like a YouTube link. Like let's say it's in the same neighborhood. I'll say, look, in this neighborhood, I sold this property. Here's a link to the video that I'm going to produce something uh, of similar quality for your property. So kind of to get them a little bit excited. And then also I use box brownie for all my listings. So I do photo enhancements. The photo enhancement, I think it's like a dollar seventy or dollar forty. Extremely sure. affordable. It, extremely it's really affordable. cheap, but it makes a big difference because it makes the sky bluer, it makes the grass greener, and it definitely makes a difference um, in your in your presentation. So that's kind of how I prepare. And then I go. <laughs> it's called box brownie b-o-x-b-r-o that's for that's for a virtual virtual staging in image enhancements yes. data dusk you know transition shots they do all of that if you have a a, a you know a listing where it's kind of cluttered like they'll literally take the junk off of the kitchen counters <laughs> and make the counter look you know clean in the pictures they take out everything if there's cars on the driveway um, for the, the listing photos, they'll take the cars out. They do a really good job um, and it's extremely affordable and they are extremely fast with the turnaround. Sometimes I'm like, how do you guys make a profit? It's really weird. Um, yeah, that, that box brownie is a good tip. Um, right. I think the biggest thing for us to share too is to make sure that all the decision makers are present at the appointment. And that's that's okay to also ask them before, like while you're setting the appointment, like ask them, is there anyone else, any other decision makers that should be there when we meet? Because the last thing you want is to get to an appointment and then you're meeting with the husband, come find out the wife did it even though there was a listing appointment going on that day. You know what I mean? Or I actually have a client right now. He wants his mother and he's an old, he's an older gentleman. His mother is 92. Um, and you know, she, it's, a, it's not, a, it's not a mama's boy situation. Let's just say that he just really, really appreciates his mother's input. And he wants his mother to be wherever she is because he is her primary caretaker. So she is a decision maker in everything that we do. Right. So these are questions that you want to ask because the last thing you want to do is think that you nailed something. And then the real decision makers are not there in order for you to move forward and to secure the listing. So definitely uh, always make sure that all the decision makers are present at the time of the appointment. Next slide. All right. So this is my listing checklist. Um, pretty much what I was telling you earlier about preparing yourself to be a listing agent. So on the very left hand side, what I have done, obviously, it's taken a long time to compile this. Um, but you can use any skills or any courses or any classes and you can add to this. Like, for example, that is a resume. Um, that I have in my marketing service plan to the right, that photo in the bottom, that's my marketing service plan cover sheet. That's a listing that I had. I'm just kind of putting this all together as I go, obviously. Um, but if you don't, let's say you don't have any awards or you don't have, um, you know, any accolades to share, you can always say, um, you know, I took a seller's seller's rep class, you know, cl classes or education. And you can put like seller's rep, buyer's rep. You can add, you know, your YPN education catalog to it. Uh, you can put in, you know, uh, I've been with my company, my company, you can use your company's stats. You can say, you know, Remax Advanced Realty is a number one global brand. Um, you can use your office statistics. You know, we sold, let's say, uh, half a billion dollars of real estate last year, whatever it is that you can use to create um, something that that is uh, kind of creating credibility for yourself. Um, so yeah, so I have this, my listing presentation, like I said, is ready to go. I hit print, my marketing service plan prints, and I actually have a checklist that says, 
You need to have your IMAP tax rule print out. You need to have your IMAC demographics print out. You need to have your RPR print out. You need your sold, active, and pending comps from the MLS and your marketing service plan. It's all ready. I print it and I'm gone. So that's you know really important to, to come up with that. As far as your marketing service plan, for many years, I had a Word document with bullet points. And I just, as I came to these classes, I would just add to the things that I would do when I got a listing. You know, um, let's say some examples. I will have a, you know, 3D tour for your property. I will have a full production video. I will have a, you know, I will have it on YouTube. It will be on Facebook. It will be on Instagram. I will do a door knocking campaign to the neighbors. I will do an open house. Whatever it is that you're going to do. And remember that if you tell them you're going to do something, you have to do it. So make sure that that, you know, you tailor that to what it is that you're comfortable to actually, um, to you know, to bring forth to action. Um, I have a seller marketing checklist, like I told you, and then obviously to create your resume. And then I also have a um, structuring the deal. So I have, um, it's kind of like I say, you set expectations in writing, and I will tell them in, in my sheet, in my marketing plan, during the transaction, structuring the deal, I will pre-qualify buyers. I will set and schedule appointments. I will request feedback. And then it will say during the sale, I will schedule inspections. I will set um, appraisals. I will, you know, um, coordinate with the with the title company and send everybody um, connection emails so that everybody is, is on the same page. You know, and then after the sale, I will arrange for the keys. I will, you know, follow up with you. Whatever it is that you're going to do, uh, I, I, I put that into writing and I and I present that to the sellers. Next slide. All right, technology. Obviously, you know, this is the name of the game now. Like we say, um, you know, it's very important. Video right now is the number one, you know, I guess viewed social media posts of all, you know, everybody wants to see reels, everybody wants to see videos. So make sure that you're definitely um, using that or, or at least if you don't have uh, money to get a videographer right now, what I did when I first started was I used uh, video editing tools and I would take the photos or I would take my own videos, you know, we all have to start somewhere, but I would take my own phone and I would edit and filter my phone photos and I would use them and create like a little slideshow with, um, you know, even Instagram right now, you don't really even need to use those tools anymore because in the Instagram platform, they, you can create a reel using your still shot photos. And if you have an iPhone, those live photos sometimes play like as if they're little videos. So little tools that you can use to, cre to create your own thing and then obviously get creative with it. And if that's not your lane and you don't like to be creative, then you can always, you know, do whatever is best for you, or maybe you have a, a, a virtual assistant do that for you. You know, you, you come up with your own ways to do things, um, but it's just very important to, to integrate these things into your business. Now, the QR codes uh, after COVID, this has been a huge. So if you obviously you have to have a single property website, um, you know, my my company gives us every listing. It auto generates one for us. Um, but I know that there's um, other hosting platforms that you can you can Google. I need a single property website or you can talk to your broker um, and you'd be able to set one of those up. Then you can have the QR code lead you there. Or maybe you can even have the QR code bring you back to your Instagram post. You know, you don't really need to to pay for extra things as you're as you're starting your your businesses. Matterport 3D tours. Every single listing gets a Matterport 3D tour. This is um, to me like almost like a non negotiable. Uh, I, I find that when I uh, send a 3D tour to a buyer and then they get to the house, they already felt like they walked through it. They kind of feel like they like they like it's almost like a familiarity with the with the property. So it's it's a very powerful tool. And also when you do have a Matterport on the MLS, it's very important if you in the input field where it says virtual tour, you put the link to your Matterport and that Matterport will syndicate to Zillow. Realtor.com, and then people will be able to online from all over the world be able to walk through your your property. Um, let's see, video walkthroughs, H Street Technology. All, all, I mean, this is just so I guess the, the meat and the potatoes of what your value proposition is to your seller. And again, if you don't have money for a professional videographer, you know, do it yourself. Next slide. You can go, Sean. All righty. So 
just really quick because I'm seeing the time. Um, the main components of the listening presentation, on top of everything that Danya has already said, it's really, really important for you to obviously show up as the expert of what is happening. So drive around the neighborhood, see what's going on. Are they putting a new park? You know, is there a new doggy park? Is there are there any signs for a new um, a new mixed use building coming up nearby and things like that? All of these things will not only make you seem like an expert in what's actually happening there, um, it's going to elevate the kind of conversation that you have with your prospective client, essentially. Um, I think it's also very important, Danya touched on this, to go through the home, tour it before you guys even start to talk numbers. You know, the last thing you want is to be like, yeah, you know what, I think your home is worth 650,000, yeah. And then you go into that fourth bedroom just to realize that it's a, con it's a converted garage without a permit and the kitchen sink is basically floating off the wall. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> you definitely want to tour the home before you guys give pricing and opinions of value and talk about all of that. Um, of course, go over the marketing plan, your value proposition, what sets you apart from the competition. If you don't have any listings or you don't have a history of lots of listings, your brokerage should. OK, I think people fail to realize, especially in our industry, that listings belong to brokerages. They belong to the brokerage. Use those stats. Use all of that in order to elevate yourself in the appointment. Um, and then, of course, you present the pricing and examples to suggest, you know, to validate the list price that you suggest. And I know this one's a big one, the commission conversation. I would definitely talk about that last. And the main reason why I would talk about that last is because it should only come up as you having to deal with any opposition to the commission if you have not necessarily set up yourself as someone showing that you actually have value, right? If there's a question of value, um, a question of what you're actually going to be doing and there's still confusion in the seller's head of like, do I really want to do this? Is this the right person? This and that. You're going to always get objections when it comes to somebody paying the price. for them. Um, On top of that, I think that the commission conversation, I'm sure everybody's thinking, especially with everything that's been happening with, you know, NAR and all of that. Is like, well, how do we even have these conversations? I think that what the most important thing for people to realize is that not much has changed. Sellers have always had the option, right? Um, Danya and I, we were actually just at Inman Connect Miami, and there was actually um, somebody there who presented and spoke about having this conversation about commissions and how to deal with all that when dealing with sellers um, if they don't want to pay and this and that and the third. And he said something very, very like interesting. And I think it'd be very, very effective when he said that in the event a seller brings up the conversation of commission and I'll do, you know, asking questions, I'm not gonna say, but whatever, you know, they, they, they bring up, the response that you should give to that is, well, you know what, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and I really appreciate you um, asking that. And I know there's a lot of misinformation out there why don't you tell me what you've heard so that I can address that? Because the last thing you, you want to do is start addressing issues that you think are issues that the seller might not have even thought about. <laughs> Let them be the one to bring up any, any uh, concerns or questions and things like that. The last thing you want to do is start going down a rabbit hole of things that they had no idea, you know, what you're even talking about. So the point is I would discuss commission last. Um, any objections that you have to commission, I would say has to do with you not setting the proper footing from the beginning, showing everything that you're going to do, who you are, what you've done, um, kind of like this proof over promise cops up because I feel like a lot of agents, they promise they'll do this, they promise they're gonna do that. Instead, present yourself as somebody, you know, you're, it's proof over promise. This is what you do, not what you're going to do. This is what you do. Um, and then discuss commissions last. Is there anything you wanna add to that, Danya? Um, I would say, um, I'm going to interject in the part where you're going over into the house before you actually talk any numbers with them. And I think the most important thing when you're dealing with people is to become likable, um, uh, to become kind of like a chameleon to their personalities and their talking styles. So as you're going through the property, you'll get to know about them. 
you'll kind of sense, you know, are they a person that um, that's number focused? Are they are they are they conversational? And you kind of get the gist of that. And then you also find ways to build rapport as you're walking through. So I'm going to have Kevin go through the next slides um, fairly quickly because I do have to leave and then Chandra can take it back and she can add anything else that she wants to add. Um, but all of these slides will be shared with you. And a lot of the, the slides to follow are the statistics and, and pretty basic you know, uh, information that you'll be able to, to digest. Um, but as far as your listings, remember that listings create more business. So as you are um, getting any listing, you want to make sure that you know you are capitalizing on every opportunity that you can to create more buyers more investors and more sellers for the future to come so for example you know you want to be sending or calling or knocking or just talking about your coming soon listings there is a coming soon um uh, let's say like input field in when you put in your listings, I have been using that. And if you price a property to sell, believe it or not, I had a neighborhood in Cutler Bay that I already had uh, a line of people ready to come to our open houses. And then obviously you're just listed when you're under contract, when you're just sold, and then you definitely want to get a review. And as I mentioned earlier in this class, you do have your Google My Business platform that you can request reviews on. Mm -hmm. so we're going to move through to the next slide. Uh, the next slide, Kevin, is all about open houses. So there's a whole class on open houses. Kevin, have we already uh, completed that class or is it is it to come? Um, it's probably to come. We did like a 20 minute brief version um, at our speaker spotlight at Domus Flats last week. Uh, but the, the person who normally teaches that class, Darnell, is actually doing a, a different class this year. So we'll have Somebody else on his team probably present that class at a later date this year. So, so yeah. So I'm just going to give you the gist of how I use my open houses. So as I mentioned, I do have a Facebook business page. I do, uh, when I put the videos onto my Facebook page, I do boost them. And if I have an, 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 a big open house, I will do some boosted ads on that. There's email blasts that you can do to all agents in Miami-Dade County you know, just kind of inviting them to come to your open houses. You can mail to the neighborhood. I've done that as well. You can go door knocking. I've done that as well. You invite the neighbors um, or if they're not there, you can have a flyer prepared with the invitation and you can leave it at their door. Uh, you want to invite your realtor network just to create some traffic. You never know. You might make, I might make a call to Chandra and she just may have a buyer that's not ready, but could be ready and it's a house and it would work. You never know. Um, and then obviously reverse prospecting on the MLS, you can send, you know, you can contact, you can email all those agents, you can do newspaper, magazine ads, you can put, you know, plenty of signs in the neighborhood. That's very important. Uh, if you don't have any, maybe your broker does, or in Home Depot, you can just get like an open house sign and then um, go live on your social media while you're there. So you can kind of create a presence. I'm going to go to the last slide, Kevin. Um, there are some statistics here that we're going to, oh, he, he doesn't have that one. Go back. Okay. So there's these statistics. Um, these are great. Um, obviously, we're going to share this with you. So I'm not going to go ahead and read every single one of these. Um, but the next slide is the most important, which Kevin will go to. And that one is 88% uh, of clients say they would use you again, but 12% don't because they forget about you and why you're not inputting them into your CRM. You're not, you know, cultivating them the way that you should. And I think that that's very, the most important thing is to stay in contact. I, uh, send out thank you cards to my clients at the end of the year for all the sales that I've done. Every single holiday, I'm sending them a happy Mother's Day, happy 4th of July, happy Father's Day, Merry Christmas, happy Valentine's Day. Like These people are not forgetting about me. And I think that that is the secret over time. If you keep doing these things, you know, eventually people will never, well, they'll never forget about you. There's one more slide about multiple offers. I don't know where it went. Um... There it is. So obviously when you get multiple offers, I think the most important thing that you have to do is you have to organize yourself on the bottom there, that green Excel sheet. I know it's simple. It's not fancy, but all it is, is I put in all the offers that I've gotten. I put in who the buyer's name was. I put in some little notes on the side because I actually call every single agent and I let them know, listen, we have a multiple offer situation. 
um, and we're looking for our highest and best. Tell me a little bit more about your situation. You know, would they be willing to do a post occupancy? Did they write a letter? Um, you know, did they tell you that they were super motivated? Did they tell you that they had to sell to buy? I put in all of this information in the spreadsheet and then, you know, I'm prepared so that when I have that conversation with my seller, I'm giving them, you know, everything that, that, that I have. I, I, it's, I'm not just saying here's a bunch of, here's five attachments with offers. And they're saying, well, what does any of this stuff mean? You know, I have to kind of be able to explain to them. This one is an FHA loan. This one is a conventional loan. This one is cash. This one is contingent upon the sale of their house. This one needs 60 days. Like I need to be able to give that information. And the easiest way for me is to organize myself like this. And I share this to them. This is what I share to them. And then that way, you know, when we talk, it's easier than just kind of pulling up 50,000, you know, attachments. So um, I, I am going to excuse myself. I'm sorry, Kevin, but I have a super huge meeting downstairs waiting for me at 205 and it's 204. Yeah, so, get out of here. Peace. Thank you so much, everybody. I am here for you. If you need any more help, if you want to talk to me, I am here for you. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Bye. Chandra, Bye, any closing thoughts? Um, well, on the multiple offers, I also use a spreadsheet. Um, very similar to this, if you don't want to do a spreadsheet, we actually get um, a service through Miami Realtors called MLS Offers <laughs> that you can use. You can activate that for every listing that you have. I think it's actually activated by default. You would have to turn it off if you do not want people to submit offers through there. And you can manage all of the offers through that platform. It's called MLS Offers. Um, and we get it for free. So that's... that's um, this is this is huge to me. This is like, especially when you're talking like sometimes getting like, you know, you remember how crazy it was like two years ago, getting 30 offers on a house. You, you just need to be able to um, explain everything um, and display it in a way that makes sense instead of printing 5000 sheets and then, you know, presenting it to a seller that way or sending off 50 million attachments. So I would highly suggest either templatizing um, an Excel sheet like this. Um, or using MLS offers. It's already integrated with your, your listings. Um, there was one more slide that I had in here. I don't know where it is, where it talked about um, what to say like, like during the listing process um, to your, your sellers as you're under contract. Is it this one? Um, no. Go. Hmm. That's weird. Go back to slide 15. Let me see. That is so weird. We went through all of them. Go down. 16, 17, 18. What's this one? Okay. Hey, that's odd, but I'll just tell you then. So it was basically kind of like a rundown of what I do with my sellers and what I thought, what I explained to them and how I follow up throughout the listing process, right? So for me, Mondays are all sellers. I'm following up with all my sellers on Sundays, on Mondays. If I don't have any listings, then I'm following up with every single seller lead, especially if they're hot um, and they have been extremely vocal or they've done some activities, whether that's in HomeBot or in email campaigns or whatever to suggest that they really want to sell. But essentially, if I have listings, what I do on Mondays is I call every single one of them and I give them an update on everything that's been going on. The main reason why I choose Mondays is because weekends tend to have there tends to be a surplus of showing appointments, right? And phone calls and is still available and all of that. And you're able to field all that and provide more information and contacts to your sellers. But every Monday, they essentially receive an email saying um, how many people were viewing the, the single property website, how many saves um, were on the Zillow profile for that property, um, how many showings we've had in the past week, the feedback for the, the showings, um, the, if we're under contract, the, our transaction coordinator is also in those emails and they give a rundown of everything that's happened. Basically every Monday, there's an update. If there's no update, we tell them there's no update. Um, and the reason why we do this is because when the, one of the main concerns and complaints that a lot of sellers have is lack of communication. They feel like they don't know what's going on, especially if you're in a situation or in a transaction where it, you're not representing the buyer and the buyer is obtaining financing. And sometimes there's this that little gap where there's like nothing happening and you're basically just waiting for approvals and stuff to happen. I've, I've, I've heard way too many times that agents basically just disappear 
And a lot of times telling your client and telling your seller like, hey, there is no update. We're still waiting on, you know, that final loan approval from the buyer and they technically have four more days left on their, their loan contingency, right? So sometimes that's all they need to hear from you. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity lost in there. Um, there was a, in a Facebook group um, with a bunch of real estate professionals um, last week, uh, somebody came in there and it actually wasn't a real estate agent. It was a seller. And she said that she's had her house on the market for four months and she hasn't heard from her agent in over 30 days. And I thought that was absolutely insane to not hear from your agent. And everybody was just like, well, maybe your agent is like dead. Maybe we need to like call the police. Do you know anybody else? Cause that's crazy for someone to just disappear for 30 days. And then a couple of days later, she came back in the group and was like, Hey, thank you guys for helping blah, 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 this and that, you know, they're okay. Um, they just got really busy with, I guess, other clients. And since, you know, my house isn't sold yet, they, you know, I wasn't a priority. That is absolutely insane. Keeping in touch with your clients and the people that you know is such an opportunity lost for not just current business, but even future business. You know, like if you do good by your clients, they're going to come, they're going to come back. So that's another reason why we added those slides of um, all of the statistics and how many people say they would refer their agent, how many people would use their agent versus the number of people who actually use their agent again. And it's, in, in my opinion, it's our fault. Because we do not, not only do we not communicate, we don't stay in touch with them and we kind of just forget about them. And this is a relationship-based business. There are times where if I'm going to get, here, here's a perfect example. I have a listing coming up in Aventura and it's a, it's a huge listing. And guess what? Building relationships with other agents, which I think we have a very bad um, habit of thinking like, okay, well, non-age, non-agents, non-realtors, non-brokers, those are the only people that I should be communicating with and building relationships with. And we forget about our peers. These are people that can help you sell. These are people that are going to help service your clients as well. So this listing coming up in Aventura, I'm going to call up every realtor that I have a relationship with that sells in Aventura especially if they've had listings there, that means that they've probably got buyer leads that, that are sitting in their database just waiting for the right property to come on the market, right? So it's really important for us to realize that communication is a big issue in our industry and it is essential for us to build relationships. It's completely essential, not just potential buyers and sellers out there in, you know, in the public, but other agents as well. Um, and I know this class was about representing sellers, but I'm going to tell you right now, there have been countless times where my buyer is interested in a house and I'm like, I know that listing agent. You know what I mean? I have a relationship with that listing agent or I have a relationship with their broker. And it makes such a huge difference when you're able to build relationships with other agents and other professionals in the marketplace. So I kind of just wanted to throw that out there because I think that's something that tends to be very overlooked. Any final questions? Any questions. Uh, someone asked what email blast system I'm using. Um, I personally just have everybody in my CRM and it is um, follow up boss. Um, so I just have everybody in there and then I segment everybody through there. And then I use that for my blasts as well, simply because it allows for like 10,000 emails to be sent a day or something. So I'm able to utilize it for all of that. For the uh, e Go ahead. For the e-property watch. So we send the request to the, the client and then they have to accept it. And then that's yeah. how they um, register into ePropertyWatch. What? Um, you should. There's different ways that they can be put into ePropertyWatch because it integrates with um, Matrix as well. If you already have contacts and stuff saved in the MLS, it can pull them right from there, or you can just upload an Excel sheet or just manually put them in one by one, um, and then they'll just start receiving emails every month, letting them know like, hey, you know, you set them up on this. 
um, platform called ePropertyWatch, Watch, and then it just systematically keeps in touch with them. Um, and you, on the agent perspective, on your dashboard, it'll actually show you who's actually opening them um, and actually looking at them, which is great because a lot of times too, um, like I've done that, I, where if I see that, oh, you know what? Billy has been opening up this email so that he can see what's happening with his property and its value and stuff. I will follow up with him, but with like a video. I'm like, hey, you know what? And then I'll do like a screen share, right? Like with his actual report open. And then I'm talking and kind of like, hey, I saw that you opened this, but just, just in case you have any questions, let me just quickly explain what this means, right? And how that affects your home value or whatever. And then I send that over to them. And it is, it, it's insane how much, People love that. They, I think that, I think that it's very important for us to get out of the mindset that like everybody want to know what their house is worth type situation. Everybody is pretty aware that they're sitting on equity. Home values have skyrocketed in South Florida. Everybody is pretty aware of that. I think it's more so about building value for yourself in other areas in order to turn these people into actual sellers. And I think another key thing too is the lack of inventory in our market has actually created a lot of sellers who act like buyers because you actually have a lot of people who need to, if they sell, what are they going to buy? So when you guys are getting buyer leads as well, whether you're doing um, lead generation or somebody comes to you, however you generate your buyers, don't be afraid to ask them, would you happen to need to sell before you buy? There are quite a few people who are in the market to buy, but actually need to sell and just have not sold because they don't know how they'll do that with the lack of inventory in our in our market, right? So that's a, that's a huge nugget right there. Um, the statistics have shown that almost 40% of buyers in the marketplace are actually also sellers. So don't be afraid to tap into those buyers and ask them if they need to sell in order for them to buy. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, easiest way to send flyers to a whole neighborhood. I remember in a class someone said FedEx. FedEx, um, I get my postcards and everything printed from um, a printing service called Club Flyers. Um, I get them designed by my husband. I'm, I'm lucky. My husband happens to be a graphic and web designer. So he does my single property websites. He does all my marketing material, but he does, he designs my postcards. We send it to a print company. They print it. Um, and then they separate them in batches of 500 and then we drop them off at the post office. And then USPS, they have a process where um, you can do it online um, where um, you tell them that you want to do every door direct mail where you want to mail it to and it'll tell you exactly how many doors how much it costs you can literally print it all on do it all online pay for it um print everything and then drop it off at the post office and it usually goes out the next day that's if you do it yourself again there are other services that you can pay for where they'll do the print and the mail out for you um where you can get the addresses for the neighborhoods um it varies if you will want to do, let's say, a snail mail type situation where you're the one sending them out yourself, um, you can use IMAP. If you know the subdivision name of the area you want to farm, you can literally go into IMAP and generate a list of all of the homes in this subdivision, right? Or in the neighborhood or in the zip code or whatever, wherever you're farming. Um, and then you can create the labels that way and you mail it off yourself that way. Every door direct mail is a little different because USPS sends them out for you in batches, right? So that is a little bit of a different process, but it is cheaper than snail mail. I'll say that. <laughs> so I think um, 83,000 or remind does that as well. Um, I'm, it's I'm expensive. It I will say as much as I love remind, it's expensive. Um, what costs me maybe four hundred and fifty dollars to to do myself would cost almost double to do through remind but it does save you the the time essentially of trying to figure it and figure it out yourself and figuring out the addresses and dropping it off at usps and did it actually go and all of that 
So you can use Remind for that. They do have the capabilities for, for them to send out um, the postcards and, and flyers for you as well. No, but definitely thank you. Um, thank you for the feedback on that because, you know, you do have to shop around and see what's more affordable because there is other companies that they're going to be giving you a best, you know, they give a best deal for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the, the biggest thing too is to be consistent. You know, it's not just if you decide to do the mailing thing, doing it once or twice is, is really not enough. Um, and not everybody gets results through mailers. I personally don't care if I get a call back through my postcards or whatever, because the way that I see it is brand recognition. That That's how I see it. You're seeing my postcards, you're seeing my ads on social media. Um, you see my listing down the street. It's like, dang, Chandra is everywhere. You know what I mean? You just never know what happens. I see everything as an in case you missed it type of approach. That's why it's going to be on social media. It's going to be in your mailbox. It's going to be a phone call. It, it's You won't see it somewhere. You know what I mean? So um, you have to be consistent, though, because you you really just never know. Um, what's a good platform to find property owners and phone numbers and emails? Remind will do that for you. If you put in the property address, it will tell you who the owners are. Um, and if there's any contact information attached to that property, it will tell you the names and the contact information for anybody who's associated with that property. Um, IMAP as well. They just recently did an update and it shows, uh, Quite a few contact information as well and both of them will will tell you if the phone numbers are on do not call lists um and then in the first couple slides which you guys will get there was a section where i mentioned a couple services um like mojo vulcan 7 and stuff where if you did want to maybe get a dialer and do um, calls that way, circle prospecting through um, phone calls, you can use those systems. And as far as the pricing goes, I'm I'm really not sure what those pricings, what the pricing is for that anymore, because I haven't used those in, in quite a while. I have another question. Yeah. Last, last question. No, no, you're fine. I don't, I'm not sure if you would know the answer for this, but um, for in showing time, you know how you have a listing, right? Um, and I want to know the report on the pricing benchmark, but, um, how do I get access to that? You have to contact showing time. <laughs> I, tr I try to contact them, but they, like, I couldn't get a hold of anyone and I sent an email and no response. No. Okay. So that, that's not, nobody can give you access to that except for them. Cause that's an added service. Um, it's not expensive though. That I'll say it's probably like 15 bucks or something. Um, okay. it's nothing, it's nothing crazy, um, as far as cost, but they would have to be the ones to sign you up for it. And, and yeah, that's a great tool to have because it's going to give you the information on the pricing. Yes. Not only on the pricing, it also lets you know the average number of showings for properties on the market, similar to yours. Exactly. And the type of a price range the buyers are looking. Yeah. With. Yeah. And, and how quickly it's more likely to go under contract and all of that. It's, it's, a, it's a really good um, tool. I do use that. I think it's only like 15 bucks. But again, showing time would have to be the one to, to sign you up for it. Okay. Yeah. If, if I don't get any hold, then I'm just going to purchase it. Thank you. Yeah. Not a problem. Any other questions? No? Well, okay. Excellent work, Chandra. That's why you are. Uh, that's why you were president now, and hopefully a president <laughs> in the future. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> hey, you got plenty of time. We, we you can space it out over a couple decades if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> decades. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much, everybody, for for tuning in today. Um, if if you uh, if you haven't noticed, we provide a lot of great materials for you uh, through through the association, which is uh, my employer. Um, if there is some sort of thing, whether it's Remind or another piece of software that we offer, we do have Miami trainers. So if you do want training on a specific uh, service or product that we offer, it could be available. There's probably already a YouTube video kind of dictating what you need to do to use the uh, software effectively. So um, just be sure to you leverage your resources. The best 
realtors in our market are not only leveraging the ones that we provide, but also finding other ones that might even do more than what we provide. So uh, do your due diligence. You know, I know it's a lot, especially getting uh, started out. So, you know, whether it's one per month, one per week, you know, it's uh, best for your workload, uh, but just start, start hammering out and getting familiar with uh, all the different products and services that we offer and, and how it can best complement your business. There's more than one way to do things in this market, which is incredible. And we offer you uh, five different ways to do it. You have to decide how it's best for you and your business. So uh, if you have any other questions, I know Chandra, I know Dania will be available. Um, their contact information will be provided on the opening slide of the recording that I'll send to you next week. And um, uh, speaking of next week on June 5th, can you believe we're already in June, people? Uh, we will be doing a class about how to gain market share in a shifting market by Lee Rosa, a very smart guy. Um, so would love for you to tune in. I'll definitely send you the link for registration for that class, which is free as always uh, when we send you the recording of this class. And yes, we will also send the presentation as an attachment as well, in case you don't want to watch the video. So um, go out there, learn a new product for me, guys. Think about joining Miami YPN if you're not a part of it. You know, obviously it's another great way of becoming more familiar and you get to pick people's brains that have already used the software and used it at a very high level, uh, you know, and, and that includes Chandra and Dania and a million other amazing real estate professionals that we've had the pleasure of not only becoming friends with, but in some cases doing business with. And sometimes knowing them makes all the difference when working on a deal. So with that, go learn your dashboard, go learn your tools. Um, you can reach out to me if you want to be connected to anybody within the association or elsewhere, Kevin at MiamiRE.com. Thank you so much for attending now today and go out there and be great, people. We'll see you next Thank week. Thank you, Kevin and Sandra. Appreciate it.